In this video, we are going to tackle the problem of creating a nav mesh and setting our agent or our player to move in accordance to the nav mesh and to the point we click on using our mouse. So let's open up the starter scene that we have downloaded using the package I have provided for you. Okay, but now let's focus on the nav mesh. So before we start, let's take a look at the documentation that Unity provides for the nav mesh component. It is a singleton class and it can be used to do spatial queries. So this means pathfinding and walkable tests. And for our nav mesh to work, we will need to have our nav mesh surface created. So here we have building nav mesh, uh, information, uh, more information about this. We will also need to have navmesh agents, so our agents that will move through the navmesh, and we can additionally have navmesh obstacles, which are obstacles that create uh, temporary holes in the navmesh, so our player is not able to walk past them. That's mostly it what we will be using, but we are going to focus on how to create a navmesh and how to create an agent that can traverse this navmesh. So let's go back to our project. Okay, so let's think about how we are going to approach creating a nav mesh for our terrain. You can see the Springland uh, prefab. It contains a land, which contains a mesh. This mesh has a mesh collider, but it isn't necessary to create a navigation mesh. So to create a navigation mesh, we are going to go to Window in the top menu, open it up, go to AI, and click on navigation. And this is the basic navigation mesh creator in Unity. There is an additional package on Unity GitHub with some more advanced features, but this will be sufficient for us. So how do we create this? We have a couple of tabs, the agent. So this is the representation of the agent that will be moving through this nav mesh. We have areas which uh, will apply some costs to the movement so we can create roads and uh, maybe movement through roads is of lesser cost, thus the NPCs will move uh, through the road rather than through the piece of land. And we can bake the nav mesh, but first of all what we will need to do is to go to objects. So objects are elements that are included in our mesh generator. So let's choose our land, and it doesn't pop up, so we need to choose the land a piece that contains the mesh, and we can see the land mesh, and this is a selected object. So we need to make it static and make it walkable since we want to walk through it. But that's not all. We also want to select the water, because water is not walkable. We do not want NPCs to go into the water. So I have previously selected it as static, and let's set it to be not walkable in the navigation area. And now we can go to our bake option and try baking this mesh. And now we have a visual representation how our mesh will look like. We can open up the advanced menu here and you might have the different value. So if I uncheck it, we can see that the voxel size is this. And this is the uh, voxel resolution at which nav mesh will be built. So this allows us to tweak the nav mesh. So let's rebake it with using standard setting and not, not much has changed. But if we increase this value, so let's try something, I think, smaller. Yep, so let's bake it. And you can see that the baked area around the water is much smaller. So it all depends on what you need. And you can tweak your parameters of a mesh using this uh, voxel size parameter. And we can still see that the water is inaccessible for some reason. So we can increase this, uh, this uh, by simply going to water and increasing the height of our water. So Y position, let's add 5 possibly. Okay, and let's choose the navigation. And you can see that our water fits perfectly into our nav mesh. So this is the navigation mesh that will be walkable for our player. So if we have our player and we click here and he is here, he will walk around this band and go where we have clicked. So now let's create our character. So we will open our Polytop Studio folder and look for characters, prefabs, and let's choose a prefab. I'm going to choose this peasant here and I'm going to drag him. Okay, 
try dragging him above the terrain. Okay, and he is pretty small fellow, so I'm going to increase the scale. So something like two, two, two. I think that's good enough. Let's rise him a little bit. And now this is our character. He has an animator, but nothing more. So we are not going to use an animator for now. Let's first add a component. Let's choose nav mesh, and we can see we have a nav mesh agent component. So let's select this. So this navmesh agent component allows us to interact with the navmesh that we have generated using the navigation tab. And you can see the outline collider. Uh, this is the collider that uh, informs the navmesh how uh, wide is the player, how tall he is. So we are going to adjust here it a little bit. Let's add 1.8 for the height. So this is about the correct height. Let's decrease the radius for something like 0.3. I think that's good enough. Okay, so now if we press play, nothing really happens. Our character is standing on the ground as intended, but we cannot really interact with him. So what we will have to do is to create a script to interact with our character. So let's stop the game and go to our assets, create a folder called scripts. Okay, and let's create here our agent controller. So C Sharp script agent controller. Great, let's open this script up. Here in this class, we will need a couple of variables to drive our navmesh agent. So first of all, we will need to reference to the camera, public camera, current camera. It is always a good idea to cache the camera instead of calling camera.main because you never know if the camera is set to have a tag main camera. And what else? We will need to have public layer mask. Let's call it ground layer mask. This will be needed for the raycast to check if we are actually hitting the ground. So we need to know that. And we need to have a reference to nav mesh agent. So let's create nav mesh agent and alt enter because we did not import the using unity engine.ai. So now we are using it and we can call it nav agent. Okay, great. We need to get an access to our nav mesh agent. So nav agent equals get component nav mesh agent. Okay. We'll set the camera through the inspector and we are going to set the ground layer through the inspector. And last thing we need to do is to get the user input. So in the update section, we are going to call if input dot get mouse button and we're going to call the button zero or get mouse button down actually, because we want to only get the uh, moment that we click the mouse. And we are going to create a function called move to position. Okay, we don't need the zero here. Alt enter, generate this method. And in this method, we will need to shoot a raycast to see if our click is on the ground or not. So if we have clicked on the ground or maybe outside of our world, so then we do not have to move into this spot. So to check this, we are going to call raycast hit call it hit and now we are going to call if physics dot raycast we are going to pass here ray and we are going to uh, actually we do not have this ray so we need to create ray ray equals current camera dot screen point to ray and input dot mouse position so this will be the ray from the camera to our mouse input so this will create this ray and we are going to shoot this ray from the camera towards the ground we want to call out hit and we are going to apply our ground layer mask so we only want to apply hits or detect hits on the ground great so this function will return true only if we have actually clicked on the ground. And now what we will need to do here is call nav agent 
dot set destination to our head dot point which is the impact point in the world space where the ray hit the collider okay great and we do not have collider on our land at least if you have disabled the mesh collider so let's go back to unity we can rename our pt medieval male peasant or whoever you have chosen to our agent and we can drag our agent controller onto our agent next let's go to our spring land let's go to our land and make sure you have mesh collider enabled and we can set the layer as you can see this is empty because i have uh, preset it to be ground so let's choose add layer let's choose layer 8 ground okay choose the land again and set it to be ground now we will we'll need to go to our agent and set the ground layer mask to be ground so we only want to register hits on the ground and next the camera let's drag our main camera since we are using this in this video okay so that should be it now let's press play and we should be able to click anywhere on the map and our agent is currently here and he is moving pretty slow so let's open our nav mesh agent and we can tweak the settings for his speed for example we can use f to focus on him okay great we can click somewhere else and you can see that our agent is now moving towards the position where our mouse was clicked and you can see our agent is turning very slowly now we do not have any animations here so this isn't a problem but to tweak it we can set it to something like thousand or maybe two thousands okay let's click again and you can see that our agent is moving much more dynamically and i like it so we can leave those settings to tweak them when we implement the animations so that's what we are going to do in the next video if you like this series and want to support me please share this video like it comment under it and subscribe to my channel thank you and see you in the next video